Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Jay. In this episode, we're gonna look at the capacity of DynamoDB. DynamoDB offers two capacity modes for the read-write throughput on your tables. They are on-demand mode and provision mode. The capacity modes control how you are charged for the read-write throughput, and how you can scale the capacity. On-demand mode is a flexible billing option capable of serving thousands of requests per second without capacity planning. With the on-demand mode, you don't need to specify how much read-write throughput you expect the application to perform. Tables can automatically adapt to your application's traffic volume. On-demand mode offers pay-per-request pricing for read-write requests, so that you only pay for what you use. On-demand mode is ideal for new tables with unknown workloads, or application with unpredictable traffic. With the provision mode, you must specify the number of reads and writes per second that you require for your application. You can also use auto-scaling to automatically adjust your table's provision capacity, in response to traffic changes. You can purchase reserved capacity in advance, and get significant cost savings compared to standard provision capacity rates. You can choose provision mode if you have an application with predictable workloads, or consistent traffic. When you choose the read-write capacity mode for the base table, both GSIs and LSIs inherit the capacity mode from the base table. DynamoDB on-demand mode offers you pay-per-request pricing for read and write requests. It allows you to pay only for what you use. On-demand mode lets you scale tables to serve thousands of requests per second, without capacity planning. It's a good option for applications with unpredictable workloads. With the on-demand capacity, DynamoDB can automatically ramp up or down to any previously reached traffic level. On-demand capacity can instantly handle up to double the previous peak traffic on a table, for example, if your application previously has reached 10,000 reads per second as peak traffic. On-demand capacity can instantly handle the sustained traffic of up to 20,000 reads per second. If the application starts to reach 20,000 reads per second, on-demand capacity automatically ramps up to be able to handle 40,000 reads per second. The request rate is only limited by the table quota of DynamoDB throughput. By default, with on-demand capacity, each table can have maximum 40,000 read request units, and 40,000 write request units. You can increase the throughput limit using AWS Support Console. You can choose on-demand mode for both new and existing tables, without changing your application code. When you enable the on-demand mode, you don't need to specify the read and write throughput that you expect the application to perform. DynamoDB charges read and write operations that you have performed, based on read request units and write request units. One read request unit represents one strongly consistent read, or two eventually consistent reads for each item up to 4 kilobytes in size. The total number of read request units doubles when you perform transactional reads. Two read request units represent one transactional read for items up to 4 kilobytes. To read an item that is larger than 4 kilobytes, DynamoDB needs additional read request units. For example, if an item size is 8 kilobytes, you need two read request units for a strongly consistent read, one read request unit for an eventually consistent read, or four read request units for a transactional read. One write request unit represents one write for an item up to one kilobyte in size. The total number of write request units doubles when you perform transactional writes. For item larger than one kilobyte, DynamoDB consumes additional write request units. For example, if an item size is two kilobytes, you need two write request units for one write, or four write request units for one transactional write. If you choose provision mode, you must specify the number of reads and writes per second that you require for your application. Provision mode is a good option for applications with predictable workloads. You can also use auto scaling for provision mode, to adjust the capacity automatically in response to traffic changes. With provision mode, you can also purchase reserved capacity for your tables to get significant cost savings. When you add a global secondary index or GSI, you must specify the read and write capacity settings. The provision capacities of GSIs are independent of the base table. However, LSIs share the provision capacity with the base table. Provision capacity are measured in read capacity units or RCUs, and write capacity units or WCUs. One RCU gives you one strongly consistent read per second, or two eventually consistent reads per second for each item up to 4 kilobytes in size. The total number of RCUs doubles when you perform transactional reads. Two RCUs give you one transactional read for items up to 4 kilobytes. To read an item that is larger than 4 kilobytes, 
Dynamo DB needs additional RCUs. For example, if an item size is 8 kilobytes, you need two RCUs for a strongly consistent read, one RCU for an eventually consistent read, or four RCUs for a transactional read. One WCU gives you one write for an item up to one kilobyte. The total number of WCUs doubles when you perform transactional writes. To write an item larger than one kilobyte, DynamoDB needs to consume additional WCUs. For example, if an item size is two kilobytes, you need two WCUs for one write, or four WCUs for one transactional write. Suppose you have a table with provision capacity of 10 RCUs and 10 WCUs. Your application is able to perform strongly consistent reads up to 40 kilobytes per second, or eventually consistent reads up to 80 kilobytes per second. For transactional reads, it can read up to 20 kilobytes per second. Your application is also able to perform write requests up to 10 kilobytes per second, or transactional writes up to 5 kilobytes per second. DynamoDB rounds up the item size for capacity calculations. When it calculates the required throughput for read operations, item size for reads is rounded up to the next 4 kilobytes multiple. For example, when you read an item that is 1.5 kilobytes using get item request, the item size is rounded up to 4 kilobytes. If the item size is 6.5 kilobytes, it's rounded up to 8 kilobytes for a single read operation. When you read multiple items using batch get item request, first DynamoDB rounds up each item, and then sums up the rounded values. For example, batch reading a 1.5 kilobytes item and a 6.5 kilobytes item, the total size is the sum of rounded values, that is 12 kilobytes, not 8 kilobytes. When you query multiple items, all items returned from the result are treated as a single read. DynamoDB rounds up the total size of all items to the next 4 kilobytes multiple. For example, if you query 10 items of 3.5 kilobytes each, the total size is 35 kilobytes. DynamoDB rounds up the total size to 36 kilobytes. The scan request reads all the items in the table. DynamoDB considers the size of all the items that are evaluated, not the size of the items that are actually returned. If you read an item which doesn't exist, DynamoDB still consumes RCUs. A strongly consistent read consumes one RCU, and an eventually consistent read consumes half RCUs. Item size for write requests is rounded up to the next 1 kilobyte multiple. For example, if you write an item of 1.5 kilobytes with put item, update item and delete item operations, DynamoDB rounds up the item size to 2 kilobytes. If you write multiple items using batch write item request, first, DynamoDB rounds up each item, and then sum up the rounded values. For example, batch writing a 500 bytes item and a 3.5 kilobytes item, the total size is the sum of the rounded values, that is 5 kilobytes, not 4 kilobytes. When you use conditional writes, DynamoDB consumes WCUs regardless if the operation is completed. If you update an existing item, the number of WCUs consumed depends on the size of the new item. For example, if the new item is 2 kilobytes, a failed conditional update or delete would consume 2 WCUs. If you write a new item, a failed conditional write consumes 1 WCU. DynamoDB Autoscaling uses the AWS Application Autoscaling Service to dynamically adjust provision read and write capacity on your behalf. Autoscaling automatically increases the capacity of the table or GSIs to handle sudden traffic increase without throttling. Autoscaling decreases the capacity when the workload decreases so that you don't pay for unused capacity. With Autoscaling, you can create a scaling policy for a table or GSIs. The scaling policy specifies whether to scale the read capacity or write capacity or both, and the minimum and maximum provision capacity units. The scaling policy also contains a target utilization, which is the percentage of consumed throughput at a point in time. Autoscaling uses the target tracking algorithm to adjust the throughput upward or downward in response to the actual workload, so that the actual capacity utilization remains near the target. For example, you can set the auto-scaling target utilization between 20 and 90% for your read and write capacity. DynamoDB auto-scaling also supports GSIs. Every GSI has the provision capacity independent of the base table. If you enable auto-scaling for a table that has one or more GSIs, for best performance, AWS recommends applying the same auto-scaling settings to all GSIs. So how do you choose DynamoDB capacity modes? On-demand mode is suited for unknown or changing workloads. 
When you create a new table, on-demand capacity is a good option to help you establish a baseline for switching to the provision mode at the later stage. On-demand capacity is also suited when you have inconsistent application traffic. Your application may benefit from on-demand mode when handling sudden spikes. You may store some time-based data that requires only infrequent access after a certain period. You only want to pay for what you use. Provision mode is suited when you work with existing tables with known workloads. You can predict the application traffic based on the historical consumed capacity and CloudWatch metrics. You can also use provision mode for applications with consistent traffic and regular traffic peaks that happen gradually. Provision mode can help you forecast capacity requirements for cost control. Provision throughput is the maximum amount of capacity that an application can consume from a table or index. If your application performs reads or writes at a higher rate than the provision throughput, DynamoDB can throttle those requests. Throttling can prevent your application from consuming too many capacity units. When DynamoDB throttles a read or write request, it returns an HTTP 400 bad request error and a provision throughput exceeded exception to the caller. Your application can take appropriate retry action for throttled requests. For example, you can use the built-in support of AWS SDKs for error retries and exponential backoff. You can switch between capacity modes once every 24 hours. When you switch from the on-demand mode to provision mode, you should look at the historical consumption in CloudWatch, such as consumed write capacity units and consumed read capacity units metrics of the table and GSIs, to determine the new throughput settings. When you switch a global table to provision mode, you should look at the maximum consumption across all your regional replicas for base tables and GSIs to determine the new throughput settings. AWS recommends enabling the auto scaling when you switch from the on-demand mode to provision mode. The LSIs inherit the capacity from the base table. When you're deciding the capacity for the base table, you should also consider LSIs. The GSIs have separate provision capacity from the base table. AWS recommends applying the same auto-scaling settings to all your GSIs. With provision mode, you can purchase reserved capacity for your tables to get significant cost savings. The reserved capacity is only available in the provision mode, not in the on-demand mode. In this episode, we've learned the throughput capacity of DynamoDB. DynamoDB offers two capacity modes, their on-demand mode and provision mode. On-demand mode allows you to create tables without specifying the read and write throughput. DynamoDB automatically adapt to your application traffic volume. For on-demand mode, you pay for reads and writes based on read request units and write request units. When you use provision mode, you must specify the number of reads and writes per second that you expect for your application. You can use auto-scaling to adjust the provision capacity automatically. For provision mode, you can purchase reserve capacity to get significant cost savings. Provision capacity are measured in RCUs and WCUs. One RCU gives you one strongly consistent read per second, or two eventually consistent reads per second for an item up to 4 kilobytes in size. Two RCUs gives you one transactional read per second for an item up to 4 kilobytes. One WCU gives you one write per second for an item up to 1 kilobyte in size. 2 WCUs gives you 1 transactional write per second for items up to 1 kilobyte. If your application requests exceed the provision throughput, DynamoDB can throttle those requests. Okay, that's all for DynamoDB capacity. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you like the video, please help us and hit the like button. If you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to the Cloudemy TV channel. Make sure to turn on the notification and stay tuned. At Cloudemy, we're passionate about cloud and AI technology. Please share your feedback and thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to watch. Happy watching and happy learning!